Hey, what's going on, guys? <clears throat> Welcome to uh, my Facebook page and uh, to this live stream. So, what we're going to uh, do today is to just take a gaze upon the week that it is coming and see what will be the potential to make, create, invite, and any kind of utilizing and utilizing in any kind and any means, you know, the love that it is wafting in the air, basically. So hello everybody, hello to those that have joined, and um, I feel kind of like not responsible but obliged to give you some feedback here because probably you're wondering why you're not seeing me that often going live, and that is because I'm working on a uh, several projects. Let's say one of them is is kind of reality now, and that was the. Um, extended tarot readings, monthly tarot readings, which every single one of you can obtain uh, for a dollar for your star sign. They are available at my website. You can go and check them out. And in those readings, literally you get your your star signs or ascendant or moon sign, whatever, choo uh, whatever choice you make, um, the career or uh, and the love as well. You know, in one video, you do have two readings. Anyway, so that was one of the projects and I was working upon it so this is the reason why I haven't been that active lately. Um, hello, hello, Karine. Hello, everybody that joins um, tonight. So uh, what we're going to do uh, this evening is, as I said, a, a tarot scope specifically meant for love. And uh, as I say specifically meant for love, guys, this is a, a general star sign tarot reading, which does not make it your personal tarot reading. So what we talk about is potential that you can utilize and capitalize on, or if you don't like it, you can totally skip. That is entirely your choice. And so uh, this is some sort of a disclaimer that I will do from now on when I'm making live videos, because there are people who are taking my words quite literally, you know, it's kind of like necessary is going to happen to them. As I said, this is a potential. You can prevent it, you can, ca you can capitalize it, you know, you can take advantage of it, or you can work against it. Either way, do what you think is best. So, uh, that being set aside, also, um, hello, Lori. Also, at the end of the stream, or when I'm done with Pisces, uh, as per usual, I will take a, a few questions from the audience and I will answer by drawing one tarot card per question and per person as well. So I will be most grateful if you uh, just ask once and you may be chosen, who knows. If I see, um, and this is a little secret of mine, if I see a person typing two questions, I usually don't pick them because it's against the rules. Okay, so that being said, we are going to Aries first. So we are moving Aries all the way to Pisces. No, Donna, we're just starting. So Aries is not even done yet. So uh, four cards spread and I will not read them card by card. This is another thing with me because I'm using a specific method, which I don't want to say that proudly, but I don't find many readers using that particular method. Anyway, so I'm using particular method and I will not do them card by card. I will do cumulative. Uh, cumulative interpretation of all four. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that word correctly. It is kind of a little bit difficult for me, but it's kind of like summarizing, you know, uh, a, a summarizing interpretation of all four cards. So, um, Tiao, uh, Nicola, this, is this mean bye or is this mean hello? Because I pretty much think that in Italian, it means bye. All right, so with cumulative reading, it means that we are taking under consideration the conditions of, of the all four cards and we make a deduction of all four cards. So, but anyway, I will tell you the positions. And the first position uh, is uh, the current, not the current situation, but the current influence or the influence that your star sign is going to face as soon as they embark the week. 
The second card goes as um, the opposing influence or someone that may obstruct you. Well, that is kind of like uh, very abstract because let's say that the first card is the Ten of Swords, you know. Then the second card as what opposing the first card, it means that this is the thing you need to do in order to avoid, you know, the misfortune from the Ten of Swords. So it will depend on the first card, what the second card is, but it is the opposing influence upon the first influence that you embark the uh, the week. Then the third card is representing the foundation or the past influence, what that particular situation is stepping upon. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I I thought that much, Nicola. But thank you, yeah, thank you. So uh, the third card is about the foundation that speaks for the past the past energy that led you to that particular energy. It's a little bit confusing here. And the, the fourth card is the future influence or something that is going to happen during that particular week, which you can take advantage or take no advantage whatsoever. That depends on you. And as we shuffled for areas now while I'm talking, <clears throat> let me cut and let's see the first four cards for the evening. The first card, that will be the four, which represents the... Um, the immediate influence and then we do have the ten of so the ten of wands which points to the opposing influence of the fool afterwards is the wheel of fortune past influence and the future influence that we do have for you Aries, that is going to be the king the, the knight of cups so these four cards i will lift i will let them i will kind of like place them down on my table because i need to kind of like i like to, to look at my cards all right and i can't do it like this or i can't but it's not very appealing is it so by having these four cards, just I will let you look at them. We have the four, then is the ten of wands. Afterwards is the wheel of fortune. And then we do have the, the knight of cups, right? Just like that. So what we have for you is that in case you are single, this, these influences are speaking that you will, you will most likely um, be a, an object of a, of how can I express it here really uh, so you will be an object which someone will try to connect again and again so that is a an attempt of reconnection from someone that you have most likely denied recently basically this is what these cards are telling for you Aries is in case you are in uh, you are single and you don't have any obligation to anybody around you and that is uh, most likely um, a prerequisite of um, spontaneous meeting in the past so maybe you you want to think about um you know whom you have met accidentally in the pub a couple of days ago or in a disco a, a week ago you know and they asked your number but they never uh they never called you back so that particular such a particular call is going to come at, at this week so it's going to be someone that you have made an impression they have asked for your coordinates and uh you know <clears throat> you didn't have the chance before that to kind of get to know to that person but now they can actually will uh come to you in a certain way maybe through a text message maybe through a comment in facebook maybe through a phone call etc etc the gazes are many different uh, that it could come in many different ways the bottom line is however that the opposing influence here shows that you will be very busy and you will hardly have the time you know to uh to give some attention to that person and again it's entirely your choice how you're going to proceed with that situation but in generally you you always need to kind of like define your priorities what priority is more uh, is more important for you because uh, it could be that your career is more important, you know, and you may reschedule a particular meeting with that person or it could be that the most important thing for you is to be with someone and you can totally involve yourself with that but the uh, knights of cups points that uh, the future influence speaks that you will have a, a pleasant time with somebody nonetheless during that particular week or you're going to feel pleasantly with the interaction with somebody and that is not only for those who are single but also with those who are in a relationship which speaks that most likely the emotional flowing between you person of interest or your partner is going to uh, improve drastically. So that was for Aries here. And let me go to uh, Taurus now as shuffling the cards.
All right, so Tauruses, now your first card, that will be the five of uh, the five of Pentacles, which is the immediate influence here with the Knight of Wands, guys, as a, an opposing influence. Afterwards, we do have the Ten of Cups, which is the past influence, and then that will be the Two of Swords, that will be the future influence, all right, just like that. Five of Pentacles, uh, Knight of Wands, then we do have the Ten of Cups and the Two of Swords. <clears throat> so what happens with these cards here is that you're going to have a rough time with somebody, either a person of interest or either your partner. And I will tell you why. It is because you have allowed them to do way too much in the past and they kind of get used to it, you know, and then now they are crossing a certain line which they shouldn't be crossing. And I'm not saying that this is going to provoke any conflicts at your table, but at least it's going to make you feel a little bit insecure either into your relationship or into the standpoint into uh, the uh, connection of interest. And under insecure, not insecure like uh, um, make it or break it, but insecure how you should proceed on forward. Should you raise the matter of that this person is crossing a little bit uh, a certain lines or should you keep it a, a silent treatment? And what it seems here is that the best approach for you, Taurus, is, is to keep a silent treatment because as you uh, patiently wait um, the matter to resolve, you know, um, let's say that a solution is going to become obvious on its own accord. So uh, being um, rather harsh, you know, with your reaction, um, opposing reaction to that person, uh, it's going to be a little bit less beneficial than just sit and wait. Of course, you don't have to feel obliged, you know, to follow uh, this person, I don't know, kind of like demands, let's say demands, or nor should try to satisfy every uh, every wish of theirs but instead of that you know try to not pay, pay them much attention all right they will quickly realize what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do or kind of what they can do and what they cannot do so it's personally like that <clears throat> and if uh, and if you have a rough time either with your partner or with your person of interest Tauruses think about how much you have allowed them so far uh, and uh, are you not kind of like um, squeezing the bar a little bit or kind of like dropping down the bar a little bit based on um, kind of regarding their uh, their approach because it, it, they will also need time to adapt to the new to the new rules so it's kind of like a, a placing a little bit of a different rules into either your connection or either into your relationship that will ultimately here as we do have the ten of cups you know as a, a past influence ultimately is going to lead to kind of like a um, improving harmony all right it's it's, um, it's a little it's it's very positive um, outlook for what we can say, but you need to make a note to the person that is trying to be with you or your partner that they cannot do whatever they want without having any uh, any consequences of it, you know. And sometimes when they do something, they are making you look awkward or they are making you feel awkward. Uh, the very the very best, you know, because they may make you feel bad, and you need to make a note of that. As simple as that. So um, the, the bottom line here for you, Taurus, is due that particular week is that you need to be very careful how much you allow um, to the people that are surrounding you. And if you kind of be able to, uh, to place the boundaries correctly, then nothing bad should happen regarding your relationship life during this week. And afterwards, going to Gemini. Hello, Tara. How are you doing? Hello, Daniel. Hello, everybody. That are around. All right, so Gemini's Ace of Wands is the first card that represents the uh, influence, the immediate influence of the week regarding your uh, romantic life. Then we do have the opposing force, which is the lovers, all right? Afterwards is the past influence, which is the high priestess, and the death card is the future influence. 
So, um, a very important, just like that, I will show them once more before I lay them on my table, all right? We have the Ace of Wands, past, uh, current influence, Lover's card, which is the opposing force, then is the High Priestess, past influence, and we do have the Death card as, um, Death card as a future influence. So, let them place them down on my table, and... Well, uh, these who are single cancers, I'm fine, Kerry. I'm, I'm quite well. So uh, these who are uh, single cancers, very important guys. Uh, these cards are pointing of the appearance of someone that will come only once in a lifetime in your life. Basically, this is what these cards are pointing, and I will tell you why. We do have the High Priest. This is a past influence. That card, for those who are single, points to the patient wait, uh, patient stillness of the soul waiting for the right one to come and as we do have the immediate influence ace of wands which speaks for a new enterprise new beginning a new restart of something uh, <clears throat> then there's no question about it it is the appearance of a very enthralling interesting and in general a person who is everything probably you have ever wanted now the opposing force is the lovers which fits quite well in the picture because the lovers as in an opposing force speaks to the fear of the opposites or kind of like the fear to involve yourself fully into something so um that card points to the person which will appear will be something you aren't and you will have a major gap of uh, uh, differences. For example, you may like to go to cinema. That person may not like to go to cinema, you know. May, you may like to stay at home and um, have a quiet evenings. That person could like to go on restaurants and pubs and have uh, rather socializing evenings, you know. These kind of stuff, these kind of differences. And at first it may, it may look like that even that you are attracting one another so much, it would never work. But that is only on the first look, all right? Because um, this card preaches that when you meet someone who is exactly opposite to you, you should not be afraid of it, but give yourself to it completely. And we do have a future influence of a death card, which points that that will be a change of your status. All right. You are single. You are no longer single. With those who are in relationship, that the death card speaks for a little bit of a, a, a different... It says a little bit of a different tale because they are uh, they are having kind of a choice because the death card in in uh, in existing relationship could mean that either you you need to now bring it to the next level or if there is no next level then obviously this relationship cannot grow any longer and then the choice is obvious all right but for those who are in the relationship Gemini's these cards are pointing that you will kind of like have an a uh, a good week, you know, of, of many activities uh, through which you are going to find out how synergized you are with your partner. And at the end, you're going to make a decision where to from now on. And as this was for Gemini, let me shuffle now and we go to Cancer. Hello, Shona. All right. Three of Wands is the first card that shows up as an immediate influence with the Knight of Wands as in an opposing influence. Then is the Hermit as the past influence, and afterwards is the Seven of Swords as a future influence. Alright, so uh, that will be a difficult reading, <clears throat> and uh, these are the cards again, over here. So what we have, guys, is uh, three, of, uh, three of Wands is pointing that you would rather want that week to be more 
harmonious than usual. So in other words, uh, you cancers will be prone to have the things the way you want to, the, the way you have imagined them to have, all right? But the thing with the Knight of Wands is here is that this card as an opposing influence is a card of experimenting. That being said, um, if you have any scheduled, no appointments, but activities and enterprises with your beloved one or even with the person of interest, you got to be open for surprises or rather like to open at, le uh, at least to reschedule certain things, to refit certain things, etc., etc. Because sitting on existing patterns uh, here will, uh, will make just, it will just make your time a little bit harder than it should be, all right? So rather you have to be adaptable, should I say that way? Because especially if you are single and, and, and you will spend time with someone of interest, then uh, the Knight of Wands, is, uh, it represents that person and that person likes surprises. That person likes to, uh, to have versatility, all right? And by you having a strict plan, obviously, it's not going to surprise them at all, which points that they will not feel themselves amused and you may quickly bore them. But the uh, past influence here, the Hermit card, this points that at least at that particular week, based on your previous um, conclusions, should I say that way, regarding your romantic life, uh, you will be very aware of how you feel toward a certain person or toward your relationship in general, all right? So if you have any doubts, should I stay or go, you know? Or uh, is this the right person for me or not, etc., etc. This week, you will, mo you will know that answer, and that answer will come from within because you will be able to analyze very uh, correctly, you know, your emotions and your feelings. And what happens afterwards is the Seven of Swords. That is the future influence. And Seven of Swords is a, is a, a very abstract card. It's a very broad card. And in this card, I want to show you the card here. In this card, the person does what the person believes is right for him, all right? Not for the grand scheme of things, but for him. He is leaving the war that isn't his, He's taking what he thinks uh, the, the war camp owns him and he basically moves to it toward his own personal agenda. So that being said, uh, at the end of the week, you got to make a choice here or not choice, but you need to decide what you need to do, what you should do with the person of interest or with your girlfriend or, a, or your boyfriend in a such a way that suits you best. You shouldn't think for anybody else, but for yourself. It's, it sounds selfish, you know, but here I like the maxima that no matter how much you try, you will never be able to satisfy everybody. So you would want to satisfy yourself foremost for a change at least once. That's that basically. So, Uh, yeah, 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 Kerry, it's, it's quite a good, a good thing. Depends how you, how you look at your situation, you know, because this week could be a week of breakthrough for cancers, you know, that this week they may realize that they are unhappy into their relationship and they may leave it and be happy afterwards, or they may decide that despite the odds, they will involve themselves into a relationship even deeper. <clears throat> yeah, like yeah, like da Daniel says, you think for yourself first, then for the rest. Because if you don't take care for your own happiness, no one else will. That is... Uh, that is known truth behind every actions of everybody uh, their happiness stays on top hello everybody that i've just joined because if you think about it just if you think about it um let's say that your wife you know or a husband whatever 
uh, buy you a present, all right? Why do they do that? To make you happy, right? But why do they make you happy? Because your happiness may be their happiness. And as soon as they stop being happy with you, what do they do? They leave. It's simple. It's all about personal happiness. And if you aren't feeling happy, of course, you're going to do what suits you best. Because no matter what everybody says, they put themselves first and foremost, regardless of what they say. Maybe um, if you have a child, you will put the child first. But it is because it makes you happy. Again. So now, Leo, as we, put, as, as we set this aside. No, Aries was first, Daniel. Aries was first. Wow. Well, I don't know, guys, you are looking at the, at the cancer reading like it's something negative. It's just the opposite. Uh, it says that they will be able to, you know, to, to, to do the things, they, to do their things, you know. They will, they will be able to kind of have it their way. And that isn't really negative. Just one second to have a, uh, a bit coffee because it's uh, 12, 30 midnight here. So Leo, um, the current influence or the immediate influence for you guys, that will be the 10 of cups. Afterwards, we do have the opposing one, which is the Justice card. So, very peculiar here. Uh, then we do have past influence, which is the Ace of Wands and the future influence. That will be the Three of Swords. Well, now we do have a rather tough reading. All right. Or Leo will have rather a little bit of a tough time during this week. Uh, how could I say that? So no one see, no one thinks that this is the genesis, the, the doomsday or whatever. So what happens here? Well, I will say it like this. All right. Uh, you Leos are going to recognize that some um, things aren't suit you any longer, probably. Now, this is due to the Ten of Cups and the, uh, the Justice card as opposing one. Uh, I will tell you why. Everybody is interpreting the Ten of Cups as a uh, card of ultimate happiness. Uh, yes and no. Now, this card is the final stage of emotional satisfaction. And what happens at the final stage of emotional satisfaction is just like with the drugs. Uh, when you have, you know, a certain dosage of drugs, at certain point you start get used to it. And what happens afterwards? You ask for more. It's, it's obvious. So you, Leo, will no longer be satisfied with something that you have been satisfied, all right? So let's say that you are in a relationship for a two months, you know, two months ago, you have involved yourself into a relationship and that relationship until now have a length of two months. And at the start, you were very happy, you know, being with that person and everything uh, looked uh, kind of pink and flourishing and etc. etc. But with time, it's, it's simply starting to fade in the sense of that it's, and it is kind of normal that you guys are taking it for now granted everybody takes it for granted and what happens is that you will want more simply that's the thing uh, you will either want more from that relationship or you will either want more from life and uh, that will make you reprioritize things all right, so you may reprioritize your career in front of your relationship, or you may reprioritize your per personal life in front of your relationship life, you know. So this is what happens here. And based on the past influence with the Ace of Wands, that card points that something 
have been born in the recent past that gave you a reason, some a, a particular reason to look forward to something, all right, that is outside of your romantic or personal life, that gives you an additional fuel. And <clears throat> the result of all that is that you're going to confront your person of interest or your partner and you're going to just tell that to them. No matter how hard it is, no matter how much pain is going to inflict, they got to face the truth. Basically, that's that. Or at least this is what you should do, because otherwise, uh, because this is going to, um, as much as it, as it going as it's going to hurt them, it's also going to allow them to uh, to recuperate very fast. The longer you keep it silent, the longer it's gonna take them to swallow it afterwards. And these cards aren't saying that you necessarily have to break your relationship or give up on, on somebody, but you need to make the thing straight. That's it's, it's simply not enough anymore, you know. Saying simple love you and having sex in the evening isn't enough anymore. And you want more. For example, living together, engagement, and these kind of stuff. And, and at least you need to start speaking about these things. And as you uh, and as someone mentioned here that they are single. Then for those which are single, these cards are pointing. Uh, they are more like advice, right? They are more like advice. First of all, they are pointing that you have missed an, an opportunity, unfortunately, in the recent past year. And... Uh, you are going to recognize that in this particular week. And what happens afterwards is that next time you will learn your lesson and the next opportunity you are going to seize. Thank you, Adrian. Oh, Tara, truth always hurts, always. But that's the thing, you know, uh, some of my clients are saying to me, you know, could you not be any milder with your words? Well, no, because the truth is it's only one and there is only one way to say it. So now going to Virgo to see what they got in store. Me? Well, Tara. Or Tara. Well, in my language, it will sound like Tara. You know, because we do have different sounds for every letter. <laughs> so, where it goes? Um, the High Priestess is the first immediate influence. Then we do have the Three of Cups. That is the opposing influence of the High Priestess. Afterwards, past influence, that will be the Knight of Cups and the future influence is going to be the Eight of Swords. So, Virgo, this reading does not concern you directly, all right? But it does concern someone around you. And if you are single and you don't have a person of interest, well, I'm sorry to tell you that, but shame on you. Because this card is pointing... Just look at that, guys. Past influence, we do have a person who finds you as the as something and not even in trolling you know at least for what they can see in you uh, you are everything that they have uh, that they are wanting thus far and unfortunately with the eight of swords they are finding themselves incapable uh, rendered to nothing to tell you what they think how they feel and in generally what the, what intentions they do have so basically, that's that. Uh, this reading is showing that uh, at that particular week, uh, you will bump with this person quite frequently, all right? But they will not expose themselves. That's the thing. And you have to kind of use your intuition, high priestess, your inner voice, 
and your senses to uh, to define who that is and depends on your status here um, will define how what the outcome of that situation is going to be you're single and you don't have anybody of interest around you well congratulations you're going to have one but if you do have a person of interest around you or you do have a girlfriend or a boyfriend here then that speaks for a third party you know that speaks for somebody that you have been unaware around you and will create a love triangle so you have to be very careful with that and we do have the three of cups and i'm not saying love triangles with the three of cups but the three of cup of cups points the incapability as it is an opposing card speaks for the incapability to share emotional feelings you know or kind of like to express emotional feelings not to share but to express them that person have a, a trouble to express those emotional um, emotional feelings and that's why they are suffering it does look like that they are suffering here and you can end that suffering with two ways you know you can either accept them to be around you or you can say to them that you don't want to have anything to do with them but with that kind of people you have to be very cunning uh, not cunning but cutting excuse me uh, I mean you cannot serve uh, your thoughts in a milder way just like I said previously you have to be pretty straightforward and kind of you know cutting again Virgos only that way they are going to understand and uh, at least uh, if you don't decide to be with them, um, at least you are going to send them on a different path. They are going to find someone else, right? Because the Knight of Cups is not someone that uh, is alone very often, uh, quite often, you know, and, and, and for a quite a long time. They will find a different muse uh, very quickly. <clears throat> so important thing is that uh, the thing was that uh, for you Virgos there is a another person coming into the picture but is not going to uncover himself or herself you know you have to be vigilant for them and that is displayed again with the high priestess which you have to use as you need to listen to your inner voice and your uh, inner senses right so now going to Libra Yeah, guys, the, the, the feed will be on a playback here at, um, on a replay, excuse me, here at my Facebook page. And I will also upload it my YouTube channel. So um, if you have missed your star sign, but your moon and the, the rising sign haven't been passed yet, uh, you may want to stick around to uh, listen to them. And as well, um, as per usual, at the end of the stream, I'm going to answer to a questions from the audience. Which means that if you want a, a free reading with me, that is the way you get it. You stay to the end of the stream or you catch me there by, uh, by a chance and ask your question. And uh, only one question per, per person will be considered. So please don't spam the feed, but just type your question after Pisces is done. Not now, but after Pisces is done. And uh, I will choose a few from the audience and I will answer those questions. All right, so as we said now, Libra, just let me let me take a bit of a coffee. Damn, that coffee without a cigarette is disgusting. For those who doesn't know, I'm pretty open for my from for myself, guys. For those who doesn't know, I I do smoke, and uh, but I don't do that in front of camera, no, because it's kind of like it's not appealing, you know. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> So, uh, Libras, Nine of Cups is the first card for you, uh, the uh, immediate influence with the Nine of Wands, which is the opposing if influence of the Nine of Cups. Then we do have the Hangman of the, as the past influence, and now here is the key of, in, of interpreting those cards, the Hangman, past influence. And then we do have the Hermit as a, a future influence here, All right? These four. So what happens for you is that uh, immediate influence points nine of cups. 
Nine of Cups is one of the cards pointing that uh, you are going to be rather very, uh, very happy with how the things are unfolding into your uh, into your romantic life. And this is the card also very reliant on a personal effort toward the goal. All right. Because uh, if you are single, that card is a sign that you are single because you have chose to be single. All right. Not because you don't have any options available, but because you chose to be that way. And uh, also the Nine of Cups points that you can heal from emotional trauma, from um, um, <clears throat> a kind of like a, 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 as well, a, I don't know how you said, but, but uh, trauma of pride in the sense of that if you have been uh, rejected recently, uh, you can use that week to heal yourself from it. And that really kind of touched your dignity, etc., etc. You can uh, you can heal yourself from it. But the opposing influence of this uh, of this card, the nine of wands, uh, the nine of cups is the nine of wands. We have double nines here and the nine in numerology. That is the number of the emotions. That is the number of touchiness. All right. That is the number of uh, of sensitivity if i may say it that way and the nine of uh, the, the nine of wands in tarot especially relationship wise uh, wise as per alistair crowley uh, says about that card and who are we to judge alistair crowley right i mean he is one of the most proven uh, spiritual workers i'm not discussing his work here but i'm discussing his direction you know who define the card as the um, attempt of binding the opposing genders, right? Especially in a relationship, which speaks that you will not lack an option available. The point will be pre previous. It's not a trauma but a previous poignant experience. So either this person you will have around you will remind you of someone from your past or you will not be healed enough from a past relationship to involve yourself completely, all right? But the thing here, uh, and, and that is defined here with the hangman, past influence, hangman, that speaks prerequisite, troubles, uh, incapability to move forward. And the hangman is also a card of water. It's a water sign, which speaks for emotions. It speaks for uh, <clears throat> touchiness as well. So it's all about emotional levels and the uh, and we have the opposing card of these emotional setbacks fire card, which is an action. Someone will want to drag you off that emotional downhill you may experience toward a certain person. I'm not saying that your entire life is emotional downhill, but you may in the back of your heart, you may still feel bad and poignant about a certain failure in a relationship you know and there will be someone there to which will want to drag you off that and the fact that we do have the uh, the hermit card as a, a future influence speaks that you will take a withdrawal or it's advisable for you to also make a withdrawal from that person or from that situation as well so you can uh, define your emotions it is all about emotions for you libras and you need to be very true to them i mean you cannot afford to feel yourself emotionally confused at the end of the week because the, the Hermit card is usually a prerequisite of a big decision that it is about to come, all right? Because after the Hermit comes the Wheel of Fortune, and that is a, a very fast approaching new opportunity, and you will have to take it, because sometimes that is once in a lifetime opportunity. And in order to take it, you need to bury down the past. And under burying down the past, I mean you need to bury down the failures, that you had a poignant experience from the past because everybody has a failures, you know, uh, and uh, uh, face that new opportunity either to reconcile or either to be with someone else, you know, with a um, a, a new image, with a new face, with uh, with recharge strength, should I say? So pretty much that was for Libra, and just to summarize that, do not allow the obstacles, the obstacles of emotional. Uh, what was the word here? Um, <clears throat> ah, I forgot the word. It was on my. It was on my. It was on the tip of my tongue. There. Anyway, emotional setbacks to uh, to obstruct you moving on forward. 
predicaments was the word. Yeah, emotional predicaments from the past to keep you on moving forward. All right, so now going to Cancer, uh, not Cancer, Scorpio is the next one. So let's see what we do have to face during that week. Sherry, I don't believe in soulmates, nor twin flames, nor Taro believes in it. Basically, if you are meant to be happy, you will be. Whom with? That is entirely your choice. Nothing is written in or carved in stones. We talk for opportunities, potential and possibilities and nothing else. Well, Meli, uh, I am staying cool in the heat if I'm not doing readings. Well, I do have a, a air conditioning, you know, and it's quite cool in my cards, but in my place. But when I do readings, for some reason, I start getting sweaty. No matter how cold it is, I'm start getting sweaty. I guess it's something about the energies, although I don't believe that much in it. All right. Because uh, I can do readings 24-7. And I'm not feeling tired at all, but it's kind of like a condition. I don't know what what that is. Uh, all right. So, Scorpio. Immediate influence. That will be the Ace of Pentacles. With the opposing influence, that will be the king of wands. Afterwards, we do have past influence, which is going to be the six of pentacles. And the two of cups is the future influence. Wow, look at that, man. Look at that. And of course, no matter how positive that reading is, at the end, I will be single. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, the, well, in any, in any way, we, we look at that, it, it does speak for new love. Scorpios, or at least for the potential of a new love. Why is that? We do have the Ace of Pentacles as in an immediate uh, influence, which speaks uh, for harmony. All right. So either uh, you can create a, a very harmonious interaction with someone around you, or you can recuperate your relationship to a point to a state of harmony. All right. The only opposing force here is the King of Wands. And this isn't the person. Uh, in that particular case, for you guys, the King of Wands speaks for uh, for your uh, how can I place it for your mindset? Because the King of Wands, when we talk about relationship, that would be someone who always places the challenges. And I would say here with that reading is that the, the the time for playing games are over. And now you Scorpio have to show generosity and have to show compassion. So stop making it harder to those who want to approach you, all right? Stop making their time harder. But just if you want to be in a relationship in case you are single, you only have to give yourself to it, all right? That, that's the only thing you need to do. Just show that you want to be with somebody, all right? Uh, basically, this is what those couple of cards are saying. Now, in case you are in a relationship, as I said, the, um, the harmony is going to improve drastically and rapidly by uh, dropping off challenges or dropping off uh, dominant behavior all right because it does look like when we do have the the king of wands into one relationship it, it speaks for that one half the dominance upon the other and that will be no longer and then we do have the six of pentacles as a past influence which speaks for the same thing, literally. The Six of Pentacles, when we do have that card in relationship, it does speak for um, contribution. You know, one has uh, more capabilities of the other to influence the relationship and one uses those capabilities to improve the relationship instead of taking on advantage of the other. Uh, <clears throat> 
This isn't Sagittarius, uh, Kathleen, this is Scorpio. Did I say Sagittarius? If I do, please apologize for the lapses. This is Scorpio. So uh, you Scorpios, yeah, basically this is what's going to happen. So uh, a very important here, as I said, is to be open, being closed and uh, trying to play games of a cat and mouse isn't going to work out very well for you. And at the end, uh, you Scorpio have the remarkable two of cups, which is the future influence. The two of cups stands as appearance of a, a someone. So you have showed to the world that you are open to receive love and bang, someone, someone appears. Or the card points to a, an emotional bondage in between two people, which could be uh, strengthening in love uh, into your marriage or relationship. Or it could be that you are starting to talk to each other again. If you have been in such a bad shape that you haven't spoken, that you haven't spoken to one another for weeks, but it will have a different unfoldment for every single one of us. The point is, Scorpios, that the unfoldment unfoldment will be rather on the positive end here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Gina, basically be open for love, girl, and under open for love, I mean that you shouldn't just. Uh, fantasize it okay but when someone asks you to go out with on a date with them you just you know go and then if you like them just show them that you like them that means to be open or um you know or if you like somebody and they are kind of scared to ask you out then maybe you have to ask them out that also means to be open all right so that was uh, that was Scorpio. Now going to Sagittarius. Thank you, Sunny. Now we're going to Sagittarius, as I said, Kathleen. So listen carefully. Your husband was say um, Sagittarius, hey. Uh, that's not cut the shirt. That's the Puma. It's the Puma. It's the Puma brand. Yeah, this is how it is designed. It's just the half of it. See, it it stops here. And what's funny, guys? Puma means cheetah on my language. <laughs> it means, literally, it means cheetah. So it's funny how a Western brand chooses that word, uh, means the same thing they are making as a logo on my language. <laughs> All right, so Sagittarius and yeah, I think if this is your personal reading, just by, by drawing the first card here, Seven of Swords, it means that your marriage is done. But, uh, well, we're going to get to that in a minute here. Now the second card comes the opposite. That is the Ace of Swords and the past influence. That will be the High Priestess. Then we do have Ten of Cups as a future influence. Okay, so what happens here? Seven of Swords points the two Sagittarius's are going to do something that will benefit you totally and completely with the price of lying. So someone, so you Sagittarius, doesn't, does not have to stick entirely to the truth. And this is where I come from. With the Seven of Swords, uh, it's written that dignity does not dictate the whole truth to be told. You need to tell only what the people need to hear. The rest you keep for yourself because your words could be used against you, right? So be very careful how you speak with people, especially those who likes you, or especially those who you have as a rivals, 
uh, in your romantic life, all right? Because they may use your words against you. But that card points that um, you, Sagittarius, should not keep it, um, should not allow the things to go by the current here. The Seven of Swords is the card pointing that you need to storm the situation in case you are feeling that, uh, that you have been mistreated, all right? Because if you keep it silent in a silent treatment and you think that uh, the other person will stop mistreating you, you are deeply wrong here, guys. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, you have to stand for yours right, all right? For, yours, for your personal rights. Uh, and uh, Sagittarius, is, um, I don't know. I am uh, kind of like I have a lot, of, a lot in Sagittarius. My moon is in Sagittarius, and I, I do say the truth, yeah. And I have no, um, no remorse for it in the sense of that I have no remorse of pity nor commiseration when I do it. For example, uh, autumn. If I don't like somebody, I just say, I, I do. I don't like you, you know, and I don't care how they feel. It's basically that simple with me but maybe it's not it's not coming from my moon in Sagittarius you know uh, anyway so uh, yeah basically you Sagittarius needs to step out for your personal rights because there is a, a big chance afterwards people can't take advantage of you and then we do have the ace of swords which falls into an opposing uh, opposing position of the seven of swords and that is a, a very tense uh, that is very tense situation because uh, you will you may be threatened all right um, especially as Caitlyn has a uh, a broken marriage you could be threatened in the sense of that people will try to talk you over with all the means necessary all right so that could involve threats as a last resort but uh these will be empty words in case we are talking about threats here, all right? Ten of Cups as a future influence points that at the end, you will be happy with what you have been left with, all right? And, uh, after, and also that card regarding relationship speaks for, the, uh, for deliberation. So you will, be, you'll be, you will liberate yourself from... Um, from a that negative influence but you gotta be strong all right so you got to be very strong and you should not allow anybody to tell you how you need to live your life so that is for those who are in relationship and especially if that relationship is abusive for those who are singles that speaks for a very bruising person someone who does not accept no for an answer and you have to give you have to serve them no <clears throat> You have to serve them no in the hard way. Just say, just if you if you need to, just shriek in them into into their face. No, with shrill ululation. So basically, that's about Sagittarius, guys. You Sagittarius needs to be very independent. All right. I mean, you need to aim independence here into that week. I wonder who is that Facebook user because he is speaking my language. Hello, Savannah. How are you doing? So, Sagittarius, is done now. Capricorn. You are a Facebook user, how should I remember you? Or at least this is what comes in my my screen, that you are a Facebook user.
All right, so Capricorns. Knight of Wands is the first card that you do have as a uh, immediate influence here, and then we do have the Death card as a, an opposing influence. Uh, then it is the past influence, Seven of Swords. And we do have the Lovers as a future influence. Uh, well, uh, one second, guys. That could speak really for a reconciliation here that you can do into your romantic life Capricorns now the Knights of uh, the Knights of Wands into a uh, immediate influence into an immediate influence uh, this speaks for um, it this speaks for uh, how can I place a, a, a try so like opting you're now opting to uh, to mend something broken and uh, by uh, by by opting that it is very important to not be uh, to not be stubborn into a certain way making things working out. So uh, this card this this says that if you do aim to make things work with a uh, with an ex boyfriend of yours or with um, I don't know. Um, you know, with with someone that have denied you in generally, uh, you can do it definitely. But that could be based on a, a mutual compromise. All right. So the uh, the lover's card points that if you are not ready to accept the person who stands either next to you or it is a person of interest or in general, it's it's someone that you want to enthrall if you're not ready to accept them, to accept them for what they are and love not just their positive sides, all right, but as well their negative sides either, then it simply ain't worth it. And probably this is why uh, either of things aren't going very well into your relationship, or if they are going very well, there is still things you want to achieve there and to accomplish. Uh, there are things that your partner probably that is doing kind of aggravates you a little bit. And then... Uh, we do have the death card as an opposing influence, all right? And that card sitting next to the, the, the Knight of Wands uh, basically loses relativity because we do have a fire card as a, uh, uh, as a main influence of your, uh, of, of your week. And then we do have a water card as an opposition here. And the main influence simply obliterates the water. The fire simply vi vi um, vaporizes the water. So what happens here is that you can avoid total destruction of certain connection, relationship, or um, parting ways, if you want to say it that way, by making compromise and by probably apologizing as well because the future influence of the lover's card also may suggest apologizing that you could not stand a, a certain thing that was a, a vital um, not vital but very important part of someone's life so we are talking here of bettering things capricorns into your romantic life but that could happen only by admitting that this time around was your fault it's simply as simple as that and then you can start opting to actually make the things going better and better and better because the Knights of Wands is very important here to be said, guys. Knight of Wands uh, has a tremendous potential, has a, an a enormous, um, enormous energy to unleash and to release. The only problem with the Knights of Wands is that they are very scattered, they scamper around and they burn out very fast. So they are wasting that energy of constantly trying to find the better way instead of sticking out with the first option available that works for them. So whatever first you find that works for you to find a person that could be a dating site, you know, it could be Facebook as well, etc., etc., or just going out and, um, you know, partying or, you know, you find how you getting a, a common ground with your partner etc etc stick to that do not try to add versatility that is the thing here because otherwise you are going to burn out very fast very very fast so that was uh that concludes capricorn and uh now going to aquarius
Hello, Christine. Hello everyone. Just remember at the end of the stream, which is two signs from now, uh, I'm going to answer uh, several questions from the audience. That will be with one card, one tarot card draw per question per person. All right, so only one question per person. Oh yeah, 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 just Jacina. I don't know how, how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong here. All right, so. Aqui. Oh, I, I actually like the first card with Aqui here, Aquarius. That would be the five swords. Uh, immediate influence. Then we do have the king of uh, the king of wands, which is the uh, opposing influence then we do have the king of swords which is the past influence and afterwards we do have the ten of wands which is the future influence so uh, what happens with you aquarius here is um first i will tell for those which are not in a relationship and they didn't have any intimacy recently whatsoever so these cards here, guys, are pointing of that uh, there will be a bruising person uh, at your end, you know, someone that will try to make a contact, but very quickly you're going to realize that that person ain't worth it at all because they are way too demanding, all right? So basically, this is the potential you're going to face during that week. For those who are entirely single, they don't have any obligations and they don't have any personal interest. So uh, for those, however, who do have a person of interest in a sense of that they are dating or hanging out or those who are in a relationship, your queries are going to be uh, accused into something. And into that something will be most likely accused into that you are taking advantage of that person. All right. But that is just a game. All right. They want to make you feel guilty that you have that you are taking advantage of them. So they can take advantage of you, you know, that it's, it's something like that, that is going to happen. And we do have the Ten of Wands as a future influence, which points that the more you believe into these people, the more you will start contri contributing to um, end their means, uh, to kind of, yeah, to face their means, all right? Um, and without even you know it, how fast it's going to happen, you're going to find yourself as a person totally pleasing their needs, all right? Or totally pleasing, you know, their expectations, if you want to say that way. So what you need to do here, uh, Aquarius, is five of sorts. Know your limitations or let that person that it is making you feeling or trying to make you feel guilty to know their limits and their limitations. Um, you need to also show them that you don't feel any regret whatsoever because whatever is done is done the very least and nothing can be done to undo it. Basically, the past is in the past and it has to stay in the past. And if you try to recapture the past, the only thing you're going to do is basically miss tomorrow. Yeah, um, what I like to say here is yesterday is yesterday. And if you try to recapture it, only thing we are going to do is to lose tomorrow. So uh, instead of... Um, Instead of believing into these kind of statements that probably are not going to support it by very much of a, a proof and arguments, because the King of Swords is what we do have here as a past influence. And that speaks that this person very well knows how to play with words, all right? They 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 can twist the truth. And this is the very the very but the, 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 the very most positive thing they do because usually what they do is presenting fictions as facts and they and, and their statements they sound very reasonable and they sound very unplaced but the only purpose for them is to confuse you and to make you believe that you have done something you never did all right or you know these people were even capable to exert kind of like a, a, a certain feelings 
without you even having them at the, to begin with, all right? So very important here for your queries is you're that weak in, in regards to your romantic life is to keep your cool and to know your place and to as well know your limitations and not to allow anybody around you to exceed their limitations. And if someone tries to point your finger and to tell you that you are guilty, you can tell them, no, the guilty one is you. Because the only thing I'm guilty of is to either, either suggest something or to chase my happiness. And if you believed in what I said, you know, as a pure coin, then it's that you are guilty of being naive. So basically, um, it's kind of like a philosophy here, right? And it's a philosophy I stick to, which is with the personal happiness. You know, you got to chase your personal happiness. And you did what you did in the past uh, because you thought it's right. And because you thought that that will make you happy. And you should never feel regret nor guilty for that you made an attempt to make yourself happy. <clears throat> Beatrice, when your life is blessed and loved, you should not kind of challenge faith and ask for it, right? Just enjoy it as much as you can. When it gets start going and going downhill, then you can check it out. But just don't challenge faith, all right? All right, uh, so last but not least, we go to Pisces, guys. That, that will be the Nine of Wands as a, a, a current influence, or rather like immediate influence. Then we do have the Five of Pentacles, which is the opposing influence. And afterwards, uh, that, will, that will be the full card as a past influence. Four of Pentacles is as a, a future influence. So these cards are displaying a um, an, an, not attempt, but rather like an, an idea. All right. You Pisces had either for your relationship or for your romantic, romantic life in general that could not be executed by a various reason, really. It could be that you have planned, you know, a vacation with your family or with your partner, but you cannot find the money for it or you cannot find the time for it, etc., etc. And what these cards are pointing, really, is the self-doubt that this is going to change ever. All right, so nothing major for you guys is happening during that week. No tantrums, really. The, the, the week for you in, in relationship and romantic aspect could only go forward and in, could, could, only be in, could, could only improve itself to a point where we reach the Four of Pentacles as a, um, as a future influence, and that points a zone of comfort. It does point to establishing solid patterns, all right, which means... Um, a very organized uh, romantic life, either being single or either being in a relationship or either dating with someone, uh, this card points that you're going to feel very comfortable where you're standing at the end of the week, or at the very least, you will know your surrounding. But the Nine of Wands as a uh, immediate influence uh, does point that, uh, first of all, you have to be more patient with the people around you, especially if you're finding yourself into a relationship. Because as I mentioned in the previous sign, that card usually marks the uh, the attempt to, uh, to make a connection, to kind of like, you know, to connect the male with the female, right? Or the two opposite characters. And uh, when that it is about to happen, uh, the, the whole process requires patience and require a little bit of adapting, all right? Because the nine of our wants is also about forcing uh, conscious changes, which has nothing to do with the spontaneous major change. Conscious, conscious changes are about to make your life more easier than it is right now without actually uh, altering the outcome of the situation. So basically, this week for you, Pisces, is the is a week where you can make your relationship much more comfortable than it is right now, or your uh, life of living, you know, single, much more comfortable and much more satisfying, even if you don't have anybody around you. And uh, if you are dating with a person, these cards are pointing that you can add more varieties 
into these uh, datings in which throughout which varieties you may reassure that person that you do like them you know and they will reassure you the same thing the bottom line is that the, at the end guys you're going to feel pisces comfortable of where your romantic life is all right so pretty much that was it for uh for all 12 and now your questions ladies and gentlemen you can start asking your questions here while i'm shuffling the cards All right, so Lisa's boyfriend moved back to town. Will he try to reunite with me? Six of Wands, I think he will, yeah. Or at the very least, he will try to uh, reconstruct what you had in the past. Uh, then we do have, uh, let me check. Virgo, Jennifer asks Virgo, Virgo General Love Card. Regarding Leo only, if possible. Regarding a Leo. Uh, uh, Jennifer, I don't know what your situation with that person is. Really, we do have the Five of Swords for that. And I have to be careful with him, really. Because, um, as I said, he may try to make you feel guilty over something. Or, at the very least, he will kind of open an old wounds so be very careful then we do have the facebook user which doesn't have a job right now and uh will the facebook user get a job soon uh and we do have the five cups and the facebook user can start a job even right now but not a job that the facebook user would like to work so yeah i mean the job it's not an issue what job is an issue but as i say as i like to say we have to start from somewhere that being said yeah you don't like op you you don't lack options available that is what i'm trying to say uh then we do have um let me let me try to follow oh my god daniel that is so long to read Also, you're asking, is your solicitor going to present you with a win? Uh, we have the moon card here. There is something that haven't been solved yet regarding that. It's not about your solicitor. It's not about the court. It's not about the case even, all right? It's just there is a either on an event or an information or whatever that it is alluding the case. And until that information pops up, and this is an information even you don't know, probably it's about your, uh, it, it probably it's about your ex that it is a, that it is yet to be found out, which is going to change that court case entirely. So don't worry if you lose the case at the first uh, at the first instance. Afterwards, I think that you're gonna win it. Uh, let me check afterwards. <clears throat> I'm trying to find more, more varieties, guys. So Savannah asks, how does the rest of July look for her? 
are really boring. Uh, the good news for you, Savannah, is that nothing really bad is going to happen, all right? But also nothing, nothing extraordinary if you are not ready to put yourself out of your comfort zone, all right? Otherwise, July is going to be for you rather, let's say, ordinary, totally ordinary. Uh, let's choose a couple more, shall we? Will my what? Well, Cheryl, will your marriage last and be happy? Well, first of all, like I said, nothing is carved in stone. Your marriage could be happy and last for, let's say, could be happy for the next six months and afterwards could go downhill. Your marriage could be happy the next 10 years. It's changeable, all right? Every every kind of relationship face uh, predicaments. So that kind of a questions they require more thorough readings. You know, just one card. My point is that just one card ain't gonna cut it. Wait a second. So Virgo is looking to embark a worldwide journey with an Aquarius, asking Mary Palma. Is it worth leaving the security of my day job to follow a dream? Personally, just personally, nobody cares about my personal opinion, but I'm feeling obliged to tell you, no, it doesn't worth it. It doesn't worth it because I know it doesn't worth it. We do have the three of swords, which points that you will be very disappointed. And it's not you're not going to be disappointed by the journey, but by the Aquarius himself or herself, whatever. I'm sorry that I had to tell you that, but this is what the card is saying. Um, I don't really understand your question, Ellie. And I don't, I don't read regarding help because. You know, I'm not a medical doctor. So one more. I'm trying to find such a questions which are rather not that sensitive guys because i don't want to really uh, answer sensitive and complex questions with just one card it's because i may you know mislead you okay so the final one is kelly crispin asking that if anything will happen in her life in July, anything great is going to happen in July for her. And we do have the Knight of Pentacles. So it is a person, a great person, as you have defined it. Great person that really knows what they want and their actions are supported with compassion and determination. So either this is going to be career-wise or relationship-wise, you will have someone that you can count and rely on. Basically, that will appear in July. So that being said, guys, this was uh, the stream for tonight. This was your uh, love taroscope, should you name it, for the week that it is coming July 9th to July 15, 2018. I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it. And in case you're interested in a private reading with me, you can check out my website, tarotpredictions.net. And if you have a chance, use your computers, you know, because uh, the phone version sometimes, especially if you're using iPhones, sometimes does not allow you to purchase uh, any services. Anyway, and uh, uh, as you already probably know, but I should, re I will repeat it, excuse me, that a uh, new service is now open. That is an extended monthly reading and it starts from July now. So you can uh, now uh, purchase your July extended 
uh, monthly reading for your star, moon, and rising sign for just as little of total three dollars per for the three videos. So it's a it's a dollar per video, and in one video there are, there are two spreads covering up the current star sign, career, and relationship in a separate spread. So that being said, thank you all for watching. It was an honor for me to be your host tonight and to present you with the uh, love horoscope for the star sign according to my cards, you know. And uh, that being said, I hope that we're going to see each other more frequent from now on. And until then, bye.